All right, so I have to record this on my phone because my little Osmo thing I forgot at home, and I had my um, game plan um, doctor's appointment with my doctor today. I kind of knew what we were going to talk about because like I had mentioned, I saw the results and had already kind of talked about it over the phone, like with my doctor and I. It was just specific to what he wanted to start doing. And so um, I'm going to play a little bit of what we, we talked about. And then after that, um, I'll tell you just a little bit more of what the next steps are. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? We're all wearing masks. I know. <laughs> Marvel, I wanted to talk a minute about this issue of uh, your blood work done. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, you have normal arms now. You know that. Yes. And they didn't see any anomalies that right. we, would, that we would want to go fix them. And uh, and the 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 lab test results are by and large benign or favorable or negative or whatever. You know that as well. You had your chromosomes done too. Yeah, but, I saw that this yeah, morning. Yeah, your issue is you have this relatively high titer IgM mm -hmm. antiphospholipid antibodies, right? Right. And I thought that deserved a, a conversation. If that's okay with you, I hope. Of course. Yeah. So uh, let me get, let me get in there. Right. Gotcha. So I'm going to give you 10 doses times three or 30 doses. Okay. All right. And that's what I'm, I'm going to give you a dose of 40 milligrams of this stuff that, okay. you, that you inject into the subcutaneous tissue right there. Okay. All right. Just like a diabetic. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Anywhere you want. You just circle around. Okay. You're there. Just to come around. One here. here. One here, one here, one here, and I'll just keep going. Yeah. They, it'll bleed a little bit and bruise yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Because of blood there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on your calendar, you know, get this all straight in front of you. On your calendar, you know, what day you're going to do the test. What day then is day 26 or 27 on the calendar. Okay. You put mark your own pregnancy test. Yeah. If the pregnancy test is negative, Put the need, put the Lovenox needles aside. Don't take any right now. Okay. Wait until the next test. See how this works? Yeah. This is a a small dose. Okay. But I would guess you probably shouldn't play rugby. Right. Right. I'm, I'm, Do things that would be <laughs> that, for which you might put myself in really bam. Contact. Yeah. Know. Right. But what I'm giving you is the is the standard dosing plan for an antiphospholipid patient who's never had a blood clot but has recurrent early miscarriage. You're okay. getting it. Okay. And the reason why you need the medication in the early on, what we're saying is just to see if it helps kind of keep the pregnancy if I were to right. that's the idea. Okay. I've seen some other stuff like the antiphospholipid syndrome where, you know, um, there's women who uh, get clots everywhere, some, yeah. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Am I in that grouping of like danger or like? I don't think so. Okay. So you probably are at some increased risk of blood clots, for example. Okay. But boy, this IgM only isotype stuff I, is really probably not as nearly as important as anything else gotcha. in this realm. Okay. Yeah. Just like a, what I call a real antiphospholipid syndrome case, no. Okay. I think your risk risk stratification is much lower. Okay. All right. So I didn't record all of it, but in a in a nutshell, um, the doctor prescribed me um, the generic version of Lovenex. Basically, it's a it's a blood thinner, um, and you know the reason he prescribed it, and you know as he mentioned, he wasn't thousand percent sure, but is because of my early reoccurring miscarriages um, and the, the the way that I tested positive for the cardiolipin and the IgM, 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 I, one of those um, antibodies uh, it, and all, all signs point to that I need support um, early on before conceiving. So basically the, the way he explained it um, is, is true. So in a nutshell, when 
I do an ovulation test, which is coming up soon. And I, as soon as I test positive, I wait three to four days. And then I start injecting myself um, with Lovinex on a daily basis. And I have to wait. There's like a two week wait between the time you hopefully can see to the point where you do the urine test, pregnancy test. And um, I have to do that shot daily. So it's about 10 days, he said. Um, once I test my urine, if I'm pregnant, then I have to just let them know and continue taking Lovinox. Um, and then at that point, you know, then Dr. Branch and I and my OB, um, which is um, RA1, she and I and he will make a, a next plan for um, just to kind of see how things are going with the conception and hopefully the implantation um, sticks, um, you know, the pregnancy sticks or it, it's implanted, right? Um, so um, I had mentioned before that um, what was happening with me was I would get pregnant. It's, I didn't have a problem getting pregnant. I think the problem was that the implantation just didn't happen. So the doctor, my labs, my blood work um, have all, and he said that have all indicated scientifically that that could be the barrier as well as making sure that my thyroid levels are at a normal level. Um, I just got a my blood work done to see how my thyroid levels are and if all was going well which I think it was with the 75 micrograms of levothyroxine my thyroid medication that means that I should be lower hopefully I'm at a, I'm at a normal range if not close to the normal range and if that's true they're going to continue me continue um, having me at a 75 microgram um, level so yeah um, I'm hopeful, but also just like, what a process, right? Like, also, I forgot to mention this. Uh, my medication was going to CVS, which we found out is not in my network. Um, but Walgreens, Walmart, and Smith's all are, which is funny because I'm like, oh, great. So the pharmacist at CVS calls me right up as I'm leaving uh, my doctor's appointment and he says that, hey, you know, we can fill it, but we're not in your network and that means you're gonna have to pay $2,500 for these injections, which is insane. Um, so he's like, why don't you get them to transfer it to a Walgreens, a Smith's or Walmart? So she tells me to call CVS, have them transfer it to Walgreens. So I call CVS, this guy that was really nice and told me that, um, you know, it was gonna cost me that much. He was really nice for telling me that. Um, he then tells me, okay, that's great, but you need to have Walgreens call us. So I call Walgreens, I like give him my information. And then the guy's like, oh, it's gonna take a couple hours. I have to call them. So that's where we're at is I am waiting to hear from Walgreens. He said it's going to take a couple hours to probably fill. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be at least a couple hundred dollars, if not three. Um, but you know, that's the price, I guess, at this point. And I'm okay with that. Um, so it's just very, I'm very introspective on just this process and I can't imagine women who have bigger issues or just different ones that are probably more pricey I just have to say that like women are amazing because we can you know be resilient despite all of these different like just these little different issues and challenges man like it's insane anyway that's that's about it for today um I'll update you guys on results and all that good stuff Ciao. So I should clarify um, that we're still very early on in this process of I want to share this. And I think I mentioned this in the first vlog where I talked about my condition because I don't hear a lot of women 
talk about these things unless you know of somebody or they know of somebody. Um, and honestly, I like to, to hear stories about, you know, successful or not about having baby or troubles, challenges, or successes. Like I identify when I hear from you guys. Um, I've talked to a few people, um, who have had challenges and a few people who haven't. And it's just really refreshing to hear that it's not perfect. Um, and it's not easy. Um, it's not as movies, social media, or shows make it seem like. Um, I still laugh because I remember things like telenovelas where, you know, Mari Carmen would get pregnant. And the first thing you saw was her like, go like this. And then she went and like threw up and that's when you knew she was pregnant. And then she would like faint. Um, those things kind of stay in your mind a little bit. And so, you know, as much as I know that it's fictional, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know a lot of um, the knowledge or the things that are actually symptoms or signals that your body is in that conception mode or really didn't understand the process. It's actually quite a process and it really is a miracle when it comes down to it. So um, I wanted to share that with you all and just continue to share that journey um, that Seth and I have. <sighs> the day has arrived. We are, I'm start injecting. This is the process that we're going to go through. So, and I should say not we, me. That doesn't do anything. This is scary. Um, first impressions, it didn't hurt that much going in, but it hurts right now that I took it out. So it stings a little bit. Um, I did wipe it with alcohol wipe before, so just going to show you guys that. Um, we'll see what the bruising looks like. Um, eventually, but that's basically going to be it every day is me doing that and different spots. Um, yeah, here we go. Well, that was fun. <laughs> um, let you know how it goes tomorrow. It's supposed to bruise and then I have to find another spot. That's it. Um, so I have 10 days. Then I have the test to see if we were able to conceive this month. And then if so, continue those shots every day for, I think, six or seven months. Um, if not, then we try again. And then I can stop injecting until next month, um, right when I start ovulating. That's it. <laughs>